Welcome to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for The Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, listening to us each and every week as we come to you live over the air. KCAA.com is the website. KCAA is the radio station, both Saturday and Sunday, and they broadcast to you in the Inland Empire, uh, San Bernardino, Riverside counties. And thank you very much for tuning in and listening as you're driving around right now today. Uh, it will be a wonderful weekend for you if I can uh, provide you with the best information. Best information being that, yeah, what, it's sunny, it's 75 degrees, and um, it's no, no rain in sight. <laughs> Those are the main things that I can give you right now. Um, all seriousness, I wanted to talk quickly about a couple of things, but first let's get some uh, details of where you can find me out of the way. I'm on YouTube, Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, and we've been on there for, oh, many, many years. We have hundreds of shows there. Many people uh, actually binge watch several months of the show, and then I get texts from them saying, hey, love the show. Thanks very much. If you want to get a perspective on where we've been and where maybe we are heading, uh, that is a way to do it. You can also go to the website, which is themortgagevoice.com. That's a terrific place to go and see and hear not only me, but uh, the guests from the show. You can get in touch with them individually uh, as their contact information and some of the information about who they are and where you can get them uh, is available there. So those two places, great places to go, as well as, of course, KCAA itself, and that's on uh, the AM and FM dial in the Inland Empire. Okay, uh, now that that's out of the way, I am Jeff Barton. This is the Mortgage Voice. Let's get right to a couple of things right away. The rates, what are they? What are the mortgage rates and how much more expensive is it this week than last week? Okay, so 7.2% is the mortgage rate for the 30-year fix, 6.66% is the 15-year, 6.64% is FHA, 7.41% is the jumbo, and the VA loan is, of course, at 6.65%. There is no good news in any of that uh, immediately, but historically, yeah, it's still pretty good rates in terms of the historical, historical perspective on where re- rates have been over the last 20 years and where they you know, are currently. We're right in the middle of where we've been uh, from the two, two and a half, three percent mortgages, all the way up to, you know, 15, 16 percent mortgages, which we had uh, back in the 80s. Uh, let's see, the extended period, okay, so the Fed, the Fed came out, left rates exactly where they were. The Fed rate is different than the mortgage rate, and I, I mentioned that many, many times on the show. So if you listen to the show, you know that. If you're new to the show, you don't know that. The mortgage interest rates that you pay for your mortgage are based on bonds, 10-year bonds mostly, but uh, a few other determinant factors. The Fed rate has some component that is within the mortgage interest rate, but basically uh, I'm going to lend you money. How am I going to price that money is dependent upon where I get the money, how much I have to spend in order to keep the money and lend it to you. Uh, and then eventually, when I get a mortgage, sell it back to either Fannie or Freddie or some private equity or some hedge fund or sovereign fund or, you know, any number of these different ways that mortgages are replenished monetarily and then lent back out to you. That's really how the lender looks at your loan. And that's, as I said, dependent many ways on what the Treasury does and, of course, the short-term interest rates that the Fed charges member banks in order to make sure that they have their liquidity that they need on a monthly basis, on a daily basis, uh, they come to the Fed and borrow money, and that is the Fed funds rate. And that is reflected in your interest rate that you are um, paying uh, because then uh, the, the banks or whoever is borrowing money from the Fed or tangentially through other institutions that borrow from the Fed or the non-QM type loans, which are much more expensive uh, in terms of how you are, for instance, uh, 30-year fixed rate today, 7.2%. I believe the, um, the non-QM type loans, uh, which are the DSCR, the uh, stated, stated, the um, bank statement loans, the ITIN loans. There's a number of different products, and we'll get into it because we have a number of guests on the show today that are going to talk about different types of products, where the market is right now. But those types of loans 
are going to cost you at least a point, if not a point and a half more. And, of course, that's also dependent on you, uh, your uh, FICO score, what your credit score is, and how that is priced into the loan. So all that being what it is, what did the Fed say? What did they do? They, they had rates remain exactly where they have been for the last five or six different times that the Fed has met. And uh, there is some talk right now because inflation has, it hasn't really heated up, but it's heated up in terms of the political sense. Uh, the Fed may actually look at raising rates one more time before the end of the year rather than the three or four rate cuts that we were promised uh, not two months ago or three months ago. It is a fickle thing, this uh, inflation, and so are the, the way that the Fed thinks about it. A couple of quotes from some of the Fed governors. Uh, we have 16 Fed governors, nine different Fed areas, and they all have say. Uh, the voting members uh, are you know, uh, those that set rates, the Fed chair is the one that um, adjusts the agenda as to where he thinks it should be going, and it is, of course, Jerome Powell. Uh, the Boston Fed person, Susan Collins, said that longer than previously thought. Yeah, that's what I just said. That's what she's saying about how long the Fed is going to keep the rates the way they are, and those, as I said, affect you, the mortgage rate. It really affects directly your uh, credit card debt, which uh, credit card payment, uh, which uh, I, I was reading, and I'm trying to look for the note now. Uh, it talks about uh, this month how credit card usage has really dropped, fallen off a cliff is what, what it said, uh, meaning that we were in a, I don't know, I think $1.2 trillion credit card debt uh, in the last couple of months as it keeps driving up, as we keep trying to maintain the spending from all the savings that had been accumulated during COVID. Now, if you can believe it, that money has lasted until about now. And because of that fact, uh, people have stopped spending because you can't continue to spend that way uh, if, in fact, your credit cards are maxed out and you got to pay minimums and you have no more savings. That's what it's talking about in the article. That's what Susan Collins is uh, talking about here from the Fed in Boston. 2% re is a, in a reasonable amount of time. That's what she said. Now, what does that mean? 2%, 2% inflation rate. 2% is where we want to be, is what we're trying to strive for. Uh, we've talked on this show before about why 2% is the number. Uh, and uh, I'll just briefly go over it today. 2% is the number because that's where we were historically for, I don't know, a decade at least. And people had become used to that particular number. And the economy was used to that, meaning that uh, the staged work uh, related increases in pay, uh, the costs that are, are associated with that pay going up incrementally rather than big jumps like they have been going. I mean, if uh, you look at any metric right now about what food costs are, what gas costs are, what travel costs are, anything about homeowners, uh, related items, whether it be repair people or gas or electric or all of that has gone up 15 to 20 percent over the last two or three years. Now, that's not sustainable, obviously, but that 2 percent number is, and that's why we want to get back down to that. That's why Susan Collins said, hey, 2 percent in a reasonable amount of time. Well, what is a reasonable amount of time? Uh, during the, I don't know, the, the, the look at it, and if you say, okay, for two years, we saw inflation really catch fire up to nine, nine and a half percent. Now it's stubbornly at three, three and a half percent. And uh, when is it going to get down to two percent? The reasonable amount of time is what? Uh, two months, five months, six months, a year. Uh, all of those could be considered reasonable. So we're probably not going to see the, red, the rate from the Fed decrease unless we start to see some effects of the actual rate uh, decline uh, on inflation, we have seen it obviously come down from nine, nine and a half percent, all the way down to three, three and a half percent, three and a half percent. So we need to see it continue before we're going to see any movement towards um, cutting rates at the Fed, which again tangentially affects what you pay in your mortgage interest rates. And all of that, what does it mean? It means that uh, hey, we've got some ways to go. Uh, it is yes, the beginning of almost the beginning of summer. Soon enough, another month or so. And then we will see where we are at that time. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice in the mortgage industry. I really appreciate you listening to the show, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. 
We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show. Really appreciate the feedback we get on what we talk about, whether it's uh, the rates at certain lenders or whether it's just the overall view of the market uh, from the people we bring on the show. We always have terrific guests. These people come to us, uh, and they do it freely uh, to be able to provide information to the audience out there in the IE, and, and uh, uh, they've been doing it for many, many, many years. And uh, once again, joining us on the show from Change Wholesale is uh, Cyril De Palma. Uh, Cyril, how are you? I'm good, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. Thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, let, let's just give a quick synopsis as to what's happened this year, and then I'll ask you briefly about it. Uh, we started at a certain uh, rate climate, thinking that somehow we were going to maintain that downward trend in uh, the mortgage interest rates, but just the opposite happened, as always does any time I, I guess wrong, uh, which is all the time lately in the last four or five years in the mortgage industry. Uh, what do you see and how are you handling uh, the way it goes? I know you do a lot of non-QM, uh, but give us your overall perspective on uh, what that is. Yeah, so uh, basically, you know, we did see the inflation come in a little hotter than expected over the first quarter of this year which obviously brought uh, rates, uh, uh, you know, coming in, coming in hotter than expected. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we're a diverse lender, and we offer a lot of different types of uh, programs for borrowers out there uh, to help qualify for alternative financing where you wouldn't be able to get financing if it was like a regular conventional uh, Fannie and Freddie type loan or maybe some FHA lending out there. Um, they do come in with some little bit higher interest rates, but they also are a little more lenient when it comes to qualifying other than just your regular W-2 borrower, um, more geared towards your self-employed clientele. Okay. Um, uh, we do offer some 90% uh, LTV bank statement program for clients uh, who are self-employed or also just a W-2. Uh, we also offer the debt service uh, coverage ratio loans uh, for, for investor purposes. Uh, you know, with uh, 20% down, we disqualify based upon the uh, debt surface of the property. So those are some uh, different type of programs that we do offer out there. And we also have our um, our no employment, no income type loan uh, that does require 25% down. And uh, we also offer that for um, uh, cash out refinances to 70% loan to value uh, for those who What's are that having, program called? Uh, that is our community program. Okay. Um, it's a it's a no income, no employment verification loan. Uh, this uh, backed by uh, uh, borrowers reserves uh, and FICO score. That is a loan that is approved by the CDFI, which we are approved lender with. Uh, for those who don't understand what CDFI is, that is the Community uh, Development Financial Institution approved by the U.S. Treasury Department. Yeah, this is this is a very good loan, and you guys have kind of an exclusivity on it for right now. Uh, tell us all about that particular loan, because I like the fact that you can have a, 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 a no-income um, verifications, and it's based on, what is it, what did you say it was based on, is reserves and your FICO yeah. score? Yes, based on the uh, FICO score and the reserves of, of the client. So okay. uh, the borrower has liquidity with reserves. Uh, they want to buy a, buy a property, whether it's a uh, SFR or a one-to-four unit property or whatnot, they can qualify with 25% uh, down with a FICO score of uh, 680 and above, um, and that will get the borrower into the, into the loan. And, you know, they can refinance um, down the road once, once they have their income stream um, uh, and more in line. Now, uh, the uh, FICO score, what, what did you say the median FICO score had to be? 680? Uh, uh, the minimum FICO, yeah, 680, correct. Now, that's not a very high FICO score, right? I mean, in, in, all things being equal, most loans, uh, especially A paper and the conventional side, want at least 720 and above. Uh, yeah, typically, the, uh, you know, uh, to get the best rate, yeah, you yeah, want to have right. a 720 FICO score and above, for sure. Okay, so uh, the, the rates themselves are based on FICO score or they're based on reserves or you have kind of a matrix to be able to figure that out? Uh, the the uh, interest rate would be based upon the um, FICO score and generally um, the reserve requirements. They do want to see nine months reserves typically okay. for, for purchase. And how, are the, how is all that verified? Traditional way you just go through a verification process with, the, with, with you yeah, guys? So we would, yeah, so we would do a verification process of uh, bank statements. 
uh, for for 30 days, and and we do that with a verification of the deposit. Now I don't know if you saw there was a couple of brokers back east uh, got busted for um, uh, pumping up the uh, owner occupied versus non occupied non-owner occupied properties and um, mm -hmm. it looks like they got arrested last week and there's a big problem uh, in terms of trying to prevent that sort of thing uh, especially mm -hmm. in these types of situations where you're not really verifying uh, income and such um, how are you guys doing that I think so so this particular product here would be basically you know for your typical first-time home buyer sure um, uh, so you wouldn't have any type of other uh, loans financed um, for this particular product uh, for the debt for the uh, debt to service income ratio loans, those are just typically going to be for non owner occupant occupied properties whatsoever. I see. Uh, so it really depends on what they what a borrower would have on their credit report as far as uh, mortgage financing goes. Okay, so the, the the rates and where the rates are headed. Now I always ask these questions, and of course neither one of mm -hmm. us have a crystal ball. But what's your sense uh, from from your talk at uh, the company? So, I mean, obviously, it's kind of like we're all in the mold of uh, data dependent from the feds currently at the right. moment. Um, so we kind of gauge, gauge with that. I mean, on a, on a monthly and daily basis, uh, uh, the fluctuation of where the uh, inflation report's going to be. Yeah, I know. And that's, uh, is that coming out soon or had just come we out? Have, we have our next CPI report due out, I believe, uh, May 15th. Yeah, it's, it's soon enough around the corner. I just, uh, it's one of those things whereby you're, you know, I, I constantly want to have people make more money, but at the same time that raises the, the, the specter of more inflation because as soon as you pay more people money, you've got to charge more people for your products, right? I mean, that's kind of the cycle we're in right now. It's a, a frustrating thing for people who are looking to have interest rates go down if they're looking at the Fed saying, no, we're not going to lower rates. We're probably, we might even raise rates. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that's correct uh, there, Jeff. Uh, it's also kind of like we're in that mold of where uh, where we hear from the feds is basically bad news is good news for, right. for interest rates. That's so right. That's right. Kind of a catch. Kind of a catch twenty two there. Well, you know, in our business, right, we do well as a industry, the mortgage industry, when the economy's bad because the interest rates get lowered and everybody refis. That's kind of how yeah. it's always been, at least the last twenty twenty five years that I've been in the business. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that 100%. Yeah, uh, when, when economy's humming, you're going to have higher interest rates. When economy's not doing so hot, you're going to have the lower interest rates, and that's where you do you see can get in, get in the marketplace. Right. Do you see volume in loans uh, uh, higher, lower? I mean, I, I know what the statistics say, but each lender is a little bit different. Uh, I would say it's kind of steady coming out of the coming out of the first quarter here. Uh huh. Um, uh, I wouldn't say it's great. I wouldn't say it's bad. I would just say it's kind of happy median right there. I see. Um, I see. Everybody so. said, well, on our end, on the originator end, it's kind of treading water, right? I mean, you're you're tapped into your old clients, obviously have been for the last year, year and a half, because rates being what they are, uh, you yes. can't really sell new product to somebody. You know, I mean, yes, people are buying houses, but they are not refining, and that was, you know, 80, 70, 80 percent of the business three years ago. So Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely say it's uh, definitely a purchase money market at the moment right uh unless you're a lender who is out there ser um you know servicing uh second mortgages out there and selling those to clients uh, that's that's the only type of refinancing i see really going on i agree i i agree with that now uh, i was talking in an earlier segment about insurance you know california is uh, in a bit of a quandary right now because a lot of insurance companies are leaving the state how are you all dealing with that oh uh, we don't Typically, you get in too much involved on the insurance side aspect uh -huh. of it. That's going to be more of the client um, and the broker putting that together. Um, but yeah, we definitely see some quite a few uh, insurance companies leaving the business. You are one hundred percent correct about that. Oh yeah, it's um, it's it, 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 and it, unfortunately, it's bringing up prices on uh, right. um, insurance for clients and. It does make it a bit of an issue for affordability when they're trying to get that new uh, mortgage, pre um, sorry, uh, insurance premium. Right, exactly. You've got insurance rates going up. You've got uh, mortgage rates going up. House prices going up. Uh, the poor home buyer is, is in a quandary. Uh, even the existing properties are, are financed uh, or however they're, like for instance, if, if you lose your insurance and you've got a loan, how does that affect a loan? Uh, yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. If the insurance premium is too high, it, it, it'll it'll drag on your uh, debt to income ratio and make it harder to qualify for the transaction. Right. Uh, obviously, if you're taking out a loan, you got to have uh, hazard insurance on the property. So if right. you can't get the insurance, you can't get a loan. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a mess, and I, I don't see anybody addressing it yet. They're waiting for some other person to, I guess, run in and save the, save the day here. I, I just don't see it. Anyway, Cyril, thanks very much. Could you shout out a way by which people can get in touch with you? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, Chains Wholesale Lending. Uh, phone number is 949-351-8599. That is uh, Cyril De Palma. Call me with any questions you may have. Cyril, thanks very much. Always appreciate you coming on the show. Great insight. Great. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Thank Have you very day. much. Good. Take That's Sarah De Palma from Change Wholesale. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in, listening to the show as we bring it to you each and every week in the Inland Empire at San Bernardino and Riverside Counties. KCAA is our radio station affiliate out there, and we have a number of podcasting affiliates as well. Daryl? Yes, Jeff. It is an extensive list. It's Apple Podcast, <laughs> Google Podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, I heard media, Odyssey, YouTube, podclips.io, and themortgagevoice.com. Okay, a whole bunch of different places where you can see us and hear us. If you just want to communicate with us, uh, the best way to do that is through the uh, YouTube channel. Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, that's our YouTube channel. Also, a podcast. Do you like podcasts? I kind of like them. I mean, a lot of the different podcasts that you might be able to get, one over here, one over there, gets kind of uh, like, where is where I'm trying to find? Well, if you go to podclips.io, you can find a number of different podcasts in one place, whether it's about lifestyle or finance, which is what I'm under, or whether it's sports, or whether it's uh, dispute resolution, all of the things that you need in one place. It's a good place to do it, podclips.io. Go there, and you can get satisfied uh, to your podcasting wants and needs. Okay, I am Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice, and again, thanks very much. Every week we bring to the show different people, and I say this every show, two or three times, but it's true. The people we bring on the show are experts in what they talk about and in the field with which they talk to you about. Uh, they are boots on the ground, people that have been in the business, elbow to elbow, that kind of thing. Uh, and Luke Mankey, who joins us now, is no exception. He's a great loan officer, good person, and somebody you can trust with the answers that they give you. Anyway, Luke, how are you? I'm good, Jeff. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me back on. Thank you, and thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I think uh, all of what I said is true, and for those of you who don't have a go-to person in the mortgage business, Luke would be the person. Tell us about the business. What's happening right now? Everyone talks about the rates and how terrible they are. And it's the purchase market. Refi's dead. How's your business? What's going on? Yeah, it's it's a lot of what you just said. Uh, very few refinances. You get some people inquiring, and there are a lot of options out there for seconds. And, and I mean, it's aggressive how high of loan amounts they'll go up to mm -hmm. uh, for people to tap into the equity. But as soon as they hear 9 to 12%, they're like, oh, gosh, I don't know if I need the money that bad if I'm going to pay that high of a rate. Right. Uh, but others are. Um, but I, it's really been a purchase market for me. Uh, and it's tough. Like, I'm up in Ventura right now, and I haven't. I've gotten a few purchases where we got, you know, first crack, and we got multiple offers, and they accepted ours, which we felt good. And then clients in LA right now, a couple offers we submitted Sunday and Monday, and 22 to 26 offers uh, oh, on these geez. places, and we're just getting murdered, uh, all cash, two week close, and it's how do you compete with that? <laughs> you don't. And that's uh, it's funny. I, last week I was on the show, and we were reading. Uh, a little bit of the statistics, as we always do, uh, that the cash buyer has really dropped down to about 6 7%, but you're saying no. In this particular case, cash buyer, how do you compete? You're right. I, that's interesting. I hadn't heard that percentage. I believe yep. it. I, I, I don't, I mean, as a, ca yeah, I mean, as an investor, which usually you think cash buyer, investor, usually, uh, uh, it's hard, I don't know, it's hard to think that you're going to make a, great return uh but maybe you I, I don't know maybe with this inventory there still is a good potential or maybe even if they're going to occupy it as their primary they've just right. uh pooled funds or gotten you know financing in order where they can pay all cash and then they'll do like a delayed i, I yeah i'm not sure yeah is the cash buyer uh an investor 
Is that the way we look at it, mostly? I don't know. I mean, a lot of times, the, the ones that I come across, that's usually what they are. Uh, but I don't know. I'm yeah. not fair to say for everyone. I, I just have come across more as them being investors. Uh, but yeah. you're right. I mean, it could be somebody that, you know, especially if it's, we're talking higher, you know, maybe they sold a million, two, three house, and then they're, they're downgrading to something, and so they're paying all cash. Yes, there's definitely those where they're going to occupy it. Um, yeah, I just thought, I just thought in California, like you said, the investment person, do they, they really get a return on their investment here? Don't you have to wait a few years before you even see a, a, a percentage that makes sense after costs yeah. of selling and fixing the property and, you know, commissions and all that, you know, I mean, especially when you're dealing with multi-million dollar properties, it really, you know, it's a, and all properties in California are multi-million, it seems, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, don't, I mean, a first-time home, yeah, it's like a, <laughs> the starter home seems to be a million, which is depressing. Right, right. very for, depressing. For the, for the buyers. Okay, uh, give us an they, idea on programs. What are you selling? Um, I, oh God, a little bit of everything. I mean, okay. I, we've done a couple hard money things, but I mean, they're, there's your standard conventional FHA that is usually what I'm looking into. FHA is pricing a little more aggressively at the lower okay. down five, even 10. It's beating out conventional 15. It's kind of a coin toss. Right. Um, so, I mean, th- th- those are common. We're seeing more people. I've, I've listened to a presentation this morning about down payment assistance. That's starting, but I, I don't know how much that's going to apply in California again, because Shoot, it's so competitive in most markets that does a seller want to see somebody with down payment like that? It's like, so I don't know, maybe that's more applicable and aggressive in other states. Um, I have yet to see one through, but there's no shortage of products. It's starting to feel a little bit like, you know, 05, 06, seven, where yeah, everyone's right. getting more aggressive. Even your A paper top tier quickens and uh, 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 UWM, like the, usually the low price, low price reader. Now you're seeing those lenders stepping into the non-QM sector and offering all these bank statement programs. And so if they're getting aggressive, they're hungry, it just goes to show you it's cut to it out there. Like everyone's trying to be as aggressive as they can because there's just such little volume. Okay, so wh- where is it headed all? I mean, c- is this an ad infinitum going on forever kind of thing where p- we see prices and mortgage rates and also the, um, uh, the, the, the ability of people to step in with all kinds? Is this sort of like where it's going to happen? For, and I say forever. Really what I mean is, is this, this season through the end of the year shaping up to be something like this? It feels like it. It yep. feels like it's going to be rough through this year then we get to like because i listen uh, uh, six weeks ago if you if i was on the phone with you i would have been a little more optimistic because we were rates were down three quarters from where they are today right. which was right. a nice low and i had a couple i had three different clients all looking to refinance that we closed loans for in 22 23 and it was making sense and they were excited and then the rates shot up and now everything's dead and now it just doesn't feel like there's a compelling reason to drop the rates just yet. I don't know. Unemployment's at what four percent now, so maybe I, I, I just do you I have feel to like it's look, be- look, look. Uh, so when that happens, have have the lenders adjusted? I.e., if you have a rate in a certain range uh, that a buyer wants and they want to lock that rate, the the standard procedure was you have to have the loan registered, you have to have it submitted, and then you can lock the rate, or lock the rate after you get a. A certain amount of approval. Can you lock the rate ASAP as soon as you register the loan? I mean, how quickly is I, that process available? I can. I mean, I can put together. We can upload a, a file, which I can put okay. together. You know, if, if somebody came at me, you know, today and was on point within a day, twenty-four hours, we can put together enough of an application, upload and lock, and then kind okay. of scramble to get everything we need to submit. So yes, we can move quick if. if if the client is on point, I will do it for them as well. And yes, we can kind of quickly try and catch that falling knife, if you will. If right, there's a of course. Really good window. Of so what's rate. the what's the advice to the client then? I mean, the client who's waiting for the rates to drop, they they should be ready right now to submit. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, I, th- that is, and that's usually. A lot of times, it's a struggle. Like we, like right. a lot of times, there's motivation. Like, oh, it looks good. Okay, let's do it. 
And then if it holds, of course, we get the loan going and we close it. But in this instance where we had a little, we had a nice window, right. move, nobody nobody really moved quick enough because, you, you, I don't know, it's like you get comfortable. Yeah, the, of course. Or it's like a human. It's like, all right, they're good. Okay, it's been rough for a year and a half, two years. It's going to get better. So you kind of think you have time and then I it know. gets yanked away. So That's what I human learned nature, the, yeah. It's unbelievable. No, I think the same way. You just get it's not lazy. You just say, "Oh, you're comfortable." Okay, okay. We're we're going to wait. We're going to see if it goes even lower. And when you and then all of a sudden it reverses and goes higher. And you're like, "Oh, sorry. I missed that one." Yeah. Yeah. Hey, really, listen. Go ahead. Really I I knew how easy I not easy. We just we really had it comfortable for so many years from like 15 to Hell, yeah, I mean, I guess it jacked 22. up a little bit before COVID, but so many years of it just being largely stable. So it's like we all worked our tails off, but it wasn't like, oh my God, we got to scramble because they're going to shoot up. Like right now, it's just the market is so unpredictable that it's uh, it's 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 tough. I mean, I'm not you know we're, we're all grinding it out. It's, right. And it's, no. yeah, I know the problem. I mean, yeah, we all know it's going to get stupid busy again once rates ease a little bit, even a percent. But um. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, you were going to... No problem. No, I was just saying we're out of time, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to shout out your phone number, a way by which people can contact you over at Malibu Funding. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, My cell is 818-209-2592, and email is luke at mankeylending.com. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, that's a nice new uh, email address. I I like that a lot. Thank you. I had had the meaning to get that new domain and finally got it, and now it's... It'll follow me everywhere. So. Oh, no, that's very good. I appreciate that. Okay, Luke, thanks very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Thank you. That's Luke Mankey from Malibu Funding. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in listening to us on a weekly. Uh, if you are one of the KCAA family out there and you listen to a whole bunch of their shows, we're on every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if you haven't heard us in the past, uh, like I say, we've been doing it for about 10 years. We always bring to you information that you can use. People that come on the show are the best people in the business, and I don't mean to Donald Trump it, but I am serious. They're really good, know what they're doing, been in the business a long time and can give you the benefit of that experience and in this particular market where you've got a lot of people competing for that house you want to buy you need the best possible mortgage person available and ready to go to work for you and uh, once more I bring that kind of person to the show Bill Orr from Omega Realty Omega Mortgage uh, comes on right now Bill how are you I'm great, man. How you doing, Jeff? I'm fine. Thank you very much. We were talking cool. a little bit off air. Bill and I are both hockey veterans. Bill still plays, uh, yep. but like the hockey playoffs, you're never quite sure what the rates are going to be. I'm never quite <laughs> sure where we're heading. Uh, I know it's been a challenge for both the originator but also the lender themselves. Where do you see it heading, and, and what do you think is the best path forward for someone who's looking for a, a home, first-time mortgage? Well, I, Gordon, I'm going to say something. Look, we all know the rates are up right now, so I'm going to say something kind of funny. And when people hear me say they laugh, but then when I explain it, it makes sense. Uh-huh. So, look, rates are up for everybody right now. Uh, whether you're in Portland, Maine, or San Diego, or Seattle, or Miami, rates are up. So, nobody in this world or this in, in the country who buys a home right now is going to keep that mortgage because they're going to refinance and rates come lower. So, what I tell people is to marry the house, but only date the interest rate. And people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so you, you you find the house, you love the house, you make the long term commitment to it, you move the family in, you get the kids in school, the whole routine. But the but the interest rate is just like a date. Maybe a date the interest rate for nine months, maybe a date the interest rate for two years. But we all know as soon as rates come down, you're gonna go for the lower interest rate. So if you find a house that you like, don't get don't get too too overly concerned about interest rates because there's nothing you can do about it. Right. And the evidence shows that if you wait, it only gets worse. So an example I'll make is, we'll say you want to buy a $500,000 house, but you want to wait. Well, we've all seen situations where a house goes on the market for 500000 and by the time the weekend is over with people bidding on the house, it's now five nineteen, it's five twenty, five twenty five. So the house went up in value $25,000 in three days. 
Right. Most people can't save that kind of money in a month, let alone three days. Right. But what conversely, you buy the five hundred thousand dollar house right now, then rates come down to a year and a half from now. So now the house is worth five fifty. So if we use that logic, if you choose to wait for a year and a half or two years, you're going to buy a four fifty house, right? But you're going to pay five hundred thousand for it because a year and a half ago, when you should have bought the house, you would have paid you would have paid. Uh, Five hundred for houses now five fifty. The same thing is also true. You could have bought a house a year and a half ago for four fifty, but now you're going to buy the exact same house, but you're going to pay five hundred thousand for it because you waited. In addition to that, you also lost a year and a half or two years with the tax write offs and uh, things like that. So whether the rates are high or low, uh, when you just anybody listening, just Google, just yeah. Google it. Graph of home property values in the United States. And it'll show you the graph from like 1950, 1960, 1970, whenever the graph starts, and the graph only goes one way up. A little bit jigs, a little bit jet, up and down, up and down, but the graph overall is it goes up. I agree with you on the, of the value of home prices. We were talking earlier about, I don't know, there's some $11, $12 trillion worth of equity in the homes right now of people who own, and then 48 million people can tap into some form of equity. Uh, right. So that that's a th- these are big numbers. The question of when you have a low interest rate mortgage and you want to tap into that, how do you you know how do you justify refining that mortgage out, or do you go to and get a second? No, well, I get a second mortgage. I mean, there there are circum- there are circumstances when the client cannot get a, a refinance on a second mortgage. Only they have to refinance the first right. in order to get the money that they want. But yeah, if if they've got a great rate, by all means, don't touch it. You know, if we if you need a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, and if we can get you approved for a home equity line of credit or a fixed rate second mortgage, obviously that's going to be preferable. But if you need the money, you need the money, and there are other other ways to help you get the money if you can't get a HELOC. What What do you see as the? Uh, I mean, are are people doing the fixes anymore? Is is that kind of loan that um, five hundred two, the FHA loan of? of uh, Fixing up properties, is that still a popular loan, or is that tapped out? You know, out? I haven't seen one of those in a while, but I, I think it's a great idea. Right. So instead of trying to go out of the top of the market and, you know, buy the pristine house, you know, the, if, if, if he just can't, if he just can't um, get get the house that you want because of so many competitors, maybe buy a house that's a little bit less expensive, expensive uh, that you can uh, fix it up with the 203K. What Jeff was talking about is a... Uh, an FHA mortgage called an FHA 203K, right. where it gives you money to fix up the house all at one time. So you buy the house for 500000 for example, and you want to build a new roof, new kitchen, new bedroom, blah, blah, blah. So it, it'll actually get you a loan uh, for the purchase of the home as well as the eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 to fix up the home the way you want it, all at the same time, all under one loan. It's closely got it, uh, guarded by FHA so you're safe in, in doing that as well. So it's a great little program. Now, in the purchase market, let's talk about that a little bit. What are you seeing as the uh, FICO score, uh, the ability to get insurance, and obviously the uh, amount of loans? Where are you seeing all these things land? Where am I see- I missed the first part. Where are you seeing about the FICO score? The What's FICO that? scores, where, where are we? Are we still over 720 as an average for FICO scores? Uh, yeah, I see, you know, I talked to somebody today whose cycles are a little bit down, uh-huh. uh, but usually I'm seeing 700 or above, Right. you know, thankfully the mortgage, most mortgage lenders will, will allow you to get a loan of, with a score of only 620, uh, and FHA, you can get a score down to, I think, 580, 590. Okay. okay. Uh, so you know, if you, you know, the main thing is don't, if you think you've got bad credit, uh, unless you've been doing this for a long time, like I have, and like you have, Jeff. Most likely, if you're listening to this radio show, with all due respect, you're not qualified to disqualify yourself. Right. So the best thing to do is, is pick up the phone, call Jeff, call me, um, and uh, we'll see if we can you know, help you buy a house, and then you, know, you let the economy take care of it from there. Okay, second question, availability of insurance. You had any problems with people getting fire insurance, uh, homeowner's insurance? Not problems, but uh, yes, it's an issue now. Right. I mean, there are a lot of the home, the home carriers are, have stopped. So uh, most cases, when I'm working with the client to buy a house, they're also working with a real estate agent, and the real estate agent has tried, has tried to scramble um, to try to provide a referral for the client or someplace to start. You know what I tell people that I work with? If you're trying to buy a house, the first people you call is your current car insurance company. 
Right. Because if if they offer homeowners insurance, you can maybe talk with them about getting a what's called a multi policy discount, where um, you get uh, your car and your home insured at the same time. Hope you get a better deal on your car insurance. Right. That's a great. And then then finally, the the programs available now. What do you see as the most popular or the one that you're seeing uh, being utilized? Is it a non QM type product? Is it more FHA or is it uh, conventional? Um. I am seeing a mix. I'm uh, FHAs are, are still popular, particularly for first-time home buyer. Right. I I wind up doing a lot of work with people who are self-employed, and sometimes people who are self-employed can be a little bit tricky because right. you know a lot of times all the income that they de- on the tax returns. Let me say it this way: the tax returns are not a, a true representation of the lifestyle that they lead. Okay. Um, they usually live a much more full life and a, you know enjoyable life than what the tax returns show. The tax returns show they only pay they only pay taxes on thirty or forty thousand dollars. In reality, they're driving a brand new car, you know, living in a nice area, and they're, so they're they're living the lifestyle. Of somebody who's making a lot more money than the tax returns show. So those are a little more tricky to get the loans approved, and I, and I do those all the time. Right, and that 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 sounds like a non QM product, right? Correct. Okay, and those non-QM products are available uh, to a, a lot of different people who have different needs uh, than your straightforward 80-20 um, conventional buyer. That's right. I mean, there's a lot of those whole boatload of programs that aren't available um, that you, you can't get at Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, Citibank, Credit right. Union, things like that. I mean, those are, those are just a very, very limited number of loan programs. Um, that those big banks offer. There's a whole world out there. So it's really, you know, if you think you have anything outside the norm, it's always better to talk with somebody who's been doing this for a long time to try to give you the, the perspective. Um, I've had some of the clients, I'm sure you have too, right. um, that, that that got turned down by Bank of America, and I helped them buy a house. Well, there you go. So and anybody out there who needs somebody, especially the experienced guy, call Bill. Hey, Bill, in that way, uh, shout out how people might be able to get in touch with you. Great, thank you. My name is Bill, and my last name is Orr, O-R-R. I'm with Omega Lending, and the phone number is 818-406-4744. Again, 818-406-4744. Excellent, Bill. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Always like it, and always like the experience that you bring to the answers you give. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you very much. That's Bill Orr from Omega Lending. I am Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, for listening to us on a weekly basis as we try to bring to you the best news possible, either in the mortgage or in the real estate world. We have a lot of great guests that always come on the show and inform and tell you about what's happening either in the lender or as a loan officer or a real estate professional or any number of different things that can affect your cost, your desire, everything else. Uh, that goes on in property ownership. Uh, one thing, I'll, I'll get to a quick aside here for a second. Uh, my insurance for my property, the fire insurance as well as the homeowner's insurance, is in jeopardy, as anybody who has insurance here in California knows. The weather-related incidences, and we've been talking about weather-related disasters and how it affects you and your buy, especially if it's a you know a hurricane or a fire or any number of earthquakes that happen here in Southern California, can affect whether you can get a loan or not. Well, the main thing about getting a loan is getting insurance. You have to get insurance in order to get a loan, not only insurance on the loan, but insurance on the property, and you have to have both before you close. Well, all of the major suppliers of homeowners insurance here in California are looking to cancel you, cancel your policy. And I don't know if you know it, but there's probably four or five different companies and probably going to go up to seven or eight different companies that are going to get out of California. I'm not going to name them here. You can look them up yourself. Uh, but anyway, I have also been affected by that. And I'll just tell you my quick story. And you can either say, wow, that's amazing. Or, uh, yeah, I know it's happened to me too. But we're all susceptible to it because let's face it, If you own a home here in Southern California, you've got earthquake, you've got flood, and you've got fire. And all of those things are disaster to uh, uh, 
insurance companies. So, quick story. So, we got a notice uh, from our insurance company that we were to be canceled unless we do uh, a fire certi certification from a uh, third-party company certifying that we are a certain level of fireproofed property. Uh, so, we had the person over today, and this is after we had removed all the brush, all the plants uh, from at least five to ten feet away from the house. Uh, all around the house. Now, we have a house that's been there since 1980. Now, when there was a fire in Malibu in 2018 that burned many, many houses, 600 houses. So, now, so I can understand why they don't want to insure us. But, in fact, uh, it's not just us. It's everybody in California for these particular companies. So, a person came over from an independent company, walked around the house, and they detailed for us anything and everything that was wrong with our quote unquote certification process and whether they would be able to certify us or not. So like most people on the outside of the house, there are many, many numbers of different things from vents to uh, antennas to wires to plumbing. Uh, depending on where you live, we live on a, a canyon-like property, so we're we have a lot of things that aren't in the ground because uh, if you put it in the ground and the ground moves, they're going to break the equipment. So we put them on the lower portion of the house. Well, on our particular house, that means all the electrical, all the plumbing, anything having to do with air conditioning, which we installed 20, 25 years ago, uh, as well as our solar panels, which the batteries are right up against the house. So all this stuff has to not only get moved, but it has to get fireproof before it's put back as well as 12 inches of fireproofing flashing on the uh, uh, where the house meets the earth. Now, in several areas of our house, that's not, not a problem because it's, you know, there's nothing there. It's basically not exposed. But on this particular area of our house, uh, because we live on a, a canyon, uh, it is a retaining wall. So the retaining wall between the retaining wall and the house is about five feet. And then all this equipment has to get moved. So it's a major undertaking. Now, on the other side of the house, we have a retaining wall, but it is made from railroad ties. Anybody who knows, has been in the fire, knows that railroad ties are bad. But they are 5 to 7 to 10 feet away from the house. So, you know, there was a question as to whether we would have to remove them. Nope, you got to remove them. So that is 30 feet of retaining, fault to retaining wall uh, that we would have to install. Now, I don't know if you know construction, but retaining walls themselves are not cheap. And you need a permit. So the permitting process in our town, maybe it is in your town too, is extensive, long, and expensive. So there you go. So that's one of the awful things about uh, what we have to do, but we have to do it because we need fire insurance. If you don't have fire insurance or any kind of homeowner's insurance for that matter, your house is worth zero because you can't sell it. Unless you are able to sell your house, you can't valuate your house. You can't say, hey, my house is worth this. Uh, well, if the next buyer comes along and can't get fire insurance, no one's going to buy it. So how much is it really worth? So in California, like in most of the uh, United States, Equity in your home is what older people have in order to either leave to their kids or to be able to tap into if they want to be able to, you know, have health care or have travel or have any kind of gifting uh, or buy anything. I mean, if your wealth is in your house and you can't tap into your house because you don't have property insurance, well, it's a problem, which means that the trillions of dollars that is in California real estate in terms of the equity available to people who own their home. Now, I'll just quote you a couple of things here about equity in your home. Uh, let's see. Four, 48 million people have equity available in their home. Two-thirds of the homeowners with equity have a 760 FICO or better. 84% of those with equity have mortgages less than 5%. Now, for me, as we've talked about on this show, I've paid off my mortgage. So, there's a lot of people, seniors, 65 and over, who have done exactly the same. So for these people, equity in their house, you, you either have it in your house or you have it in the stock market, right? I mean, that's the boomer generation. That's what we did. And so knowing that the, the next crash in the market is just around the corner, most people take comfort in the fact that they have equity in their home. But if an insurance company is unwilling and unable to insure you, and I don't know if we can afford to do all this renovation, I mean, we're probably talking in excess of $100,000 worth of work to the house just to maybe get insured in how long? A year, right? So 
Do you go California Fair Plan? Now, anybody who's applied and gotten California Fair Plan will know that they only insure on fire. They don't insure flood, and they don't insure wind-related, and they don't insure uh, water-related damage. So you are gambling that your property will be okay in those other disaster-like um, situations rather than just the fire situation. So as you can tell by my own, in, you know, anxiety about the whole thing yeah it's a problem and i don't know how we're going to solve it but it's not just a jeff problem here it is a california problem and nobody is addressing it it's like the um uh the situation with real estate agents here in southern california because the business model has changed a hundred percent the dealing with it by authorities either nar or the state of California to be able to help those people who are in dire situations. I both am a buyer's agent for real estate and I've got this insurance problem. Now, granted, I have socked away enough money in my lifetime so I'm not at risk of losing anything, uh, but I would like to be able to insure my house and have a job. These are a couple things that most people just take for granted, but if you are two of those things, real estate agents and homeowner, yeah, you're thinking about your career, and you're thinking about how you make money, and you're thinking about how to insure your property. Okay, 80% of Americans thinks it's a bad time to buy a house. You think? If you have these kinds of insurance problems, yes, it is a bad time to buy a house. However, we don't live in America. We live in California. So most of this is about what's happening in the rest of the country. 38,000 not... Uh, 389000 is the median price for homes. It's up 5% this year from last year. We thought we would find property values decreasing. It's not happening. And even with uh, the price of properties going up, pro price of uh, mortgages going up, we still see the uh, real estate values going up. Uh, it's a good thing for people who are selling. It's a bad thing for people who want to buy. Prices in metro areas spike. 93% of markets uh, say home prices increases. That's unbelievable. 559,744 houses available through the MLSs and 3.3 months of supply are available. Now that sounds better than it was, but we typically like to see six months because that's an equal supply and an equal demand. And uh, we haven't seen that in quite some time. And I don't know if we're going to see it this summer because it looks like we're shaping up to be, again, another record-breaking year in prices. Anyway, I am Jeff Barton. I am your voice in the real estate and mortgage world, and uh, we'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net.